How's it going everybody? Ad Ricker here. Uh, about a month ago I put out a video about the Mavic Mini. It's a flight tutorial, how to set it up, how to fly for the first time. There's one thing I didn't talk about, is how to get proper exposure with the Mavic Mini in video mode. In video mode with the Mavic Mini, there's no way to actually control the shutter and the ISO values like we could with other DJI uh, drone products. So today I'm going to show you how to use auto exposure lock, raising and lowering the exposure values, and also using Freewell Gear's ND and polarizer pack for the Mavic Mini. And this way we can get a little bit better of a, a shot, maybe something that looks a little more professional, and we're not always relying on a constant auto exposure that changes as we move the drone around. Now I'm going to take off and fly first without the Freewell filters. I just want to show you what auto exposure lock will do as well as the EV up and down values and what they do. All right, we have powered on the drone and you can see in the screen we're on a landing pad. We're still on the ground. Uh, so on the lower right, you see EV and AE and that's what we're looking at right now. On the right side of the app, we're going to select video mode. And let's do 30, I'm shooting in 30 in this video, so we'll do 30 frames a second at 2.7K. And we are up. We're gonna go to about 100 feet and uh, just hover it there for the time being. Now if you go to your camera settings in the app and select advanced settings, you can turn on histogram and overexposure warning. And those two options will help us to determine the best possible exposure out here. Uh, so once those are turned on, we're gonna uh, get out of the menu and you can see that the sky is a bit overblown But since we're in auto exposure as we tilt up the image gets darker the drone is compensating Automatically for that as we tilt our uh, camera back down Now the drone is starting to compensate for the ground uh, and, and the best exposure for the ground and the image has brightened up significantly in the sky region. That's why we see these overexposure uh, over warnings. We we'll call them zebra stripes. You can also see in the histogram on the lower right, which by the way, you can drag anywhere you want. There are different, there are two different peaks, kind of like a camel's back here. And then at the very right, there's a, another sharp peak. The sharp peak on the right indicates the bright sky and the middle uh, hump indicates the exposure of the ground. So from left to right is dark to bright. Um, it's not necessarily uh, from left to right in the image, it's just taking into account what is bright and what is dark in this image. So um, all the way to the right, it's showing how bright those highlights really are. And uh, they're pretty bright. As we tilt the camera up, you'll see that right spike start to move more toward the center of the image, and that's because the camera is auto-exposing uh, for the sky, it's darkening the image, and now the sky is not quite as bright. We tilt back down, and uh, we see that spike uh, travel more to the right, it's getting hotter, it's getting hotter, and now the ground uh, hump has moved from the left to the right a little bit, more in the middle. So what can we do at this point? On the lower right, you see EV and AE. You can tap either one. Uh, if you tap EV, it'll show you various exposure values. Um, if you don't see this, you might have to go into photo mode first, toggle manual mode in photo, then go back to video and you'll get EV unlocked. And then AE, you tap that and that is auto exposure lock. So that means that if the drone has figured out what exposure automatically it wants for this particular framing, you tap AE and then you can move anywhere and that exposure stays. Auto exposure has now been turned off essentially. So as we pan up in the sky, um, the sky is not changing exposure. Uh, the ground is still uh, at the same exposure. But here's the thing, even though it thinks that this is a well exposed street, to me, I don't think it is. I think it's a little hot, a little bright. So in EV, I tap that and I can scroll down to minus three or minus seven and find that sweet spot. Um, so this might be a, a combination of uh, exposing for the ground in the sky or finding that happy medium or maybe you have a subject in the frame and the auto exposure is not really finding the perfect exposure you're looking for. So for instance, I want to get a shot of this tree. It's a tall tree and I'm looking up and auto exposure kind of turns it into a silhouette. This is what auto exposure thinks I want. It thinks that I want a nice blue sky and so it's auto exposing for that. But I want to see the detail in the tree. Let's put uh, EV back to zero. We're going to tilt down to get a brighter camera. 
right about there, lock the exposure, and then look back up. Now we can actually see parts of the tree. And I'm gonna come around, that's a hefty lens flare. There we go. So if I wanted to get a, a shot of some of these branches, this might really help to lock that exposure. Another way to do this is to raise my EV value with auto exposure on. So I'm just kind of like raising EV until I like what I see, maybe plus one. Then I'll lock auto exposure. And now I'm gonna uh, maintain a plus one EV with a locked exposure. And I can get the shot that I'm looking for. Again, the sky's overblown, but that's not what my subject is. I wanna see the pine needles on the tree. Now at this point, it looks like it is a little bit overblown even for the tree. So I'm gonna go back to point three, lock that exposure, and there we go. This might actually be a little bit more, well, it depends which side of the tree I'm on, you know? And that's again, part of the reason why you'd wanna do this. If I'm on this side, it's darker. If I'm on the other side with the sun, and obviously it's brighter. So it really just depends what kind of framing you want. Now for the best video settings for a drone, usually it's um, you know low ISO and shutter speed twice your frame rate. Since we only have exposure value and auto exposure lock on the Mavic Mini, it limits us a little bit. Um, however, we do know that internally it is adjusting shutter speed. So if we put something dark over the lens, we know that it's going to automatically lower that shutter speed to brighten the image back up. And then hence we have found a lower shutter speed. What that shutter speed is exactly, it's hard to say. But if we think about what filter we're gonna put on, we can kind of eyeball it. Now in very bright situations, auto exposure and EV value might look great, but inside the camera, the shutter value is very high. And shutter speed is something that we've talked about lots of in this, uh, on this YouTube channel, where a high shutter speed uh, causes very little motion blur. Things that are moving in the frame are going to be very clear, and that doesn't always look right. Um, even in real life, if you move something really fast, your hand kind of gets blurry in your vision. It doesn't look natural to have a crystal clear frame with fast movement. So as I'm moving the drone very fast, and I'm gonna start recording and show you, there's no motion blur in this image. And so as I move, it's almost kind of disorienting. Um, you don't see any of that motion blur. And, and a lot of video games have a, the option to turn on motion blur. Um, that's to make it look more natural to our eyes. So um, usually a, a lower shutter speed is more favorable. As the vehicles move left to right or right to left in the frame here, um, we don't see any motion blur of the vehicles. So every frame is like sharp and again, doesn't look that natural to the eye. With the Freewell Gears all day eight pack, you have your ND4, eight, and 16, plus your circular polarizer, and you have the polarized ND8, 16, 32, and 64. So ND64 is a very dark filter. You'd probably use that more with photo mode, but for video, you could probably just stick with ND16 at the most and get the effect you're looking for. Around this time of day, like I said, probably an ND8 would work. Uh, maybe even an ND4 if we're shooting into some of these shadows, but an ND8 probably for the sun when it's very low in the sky, uh, still showing some sun on these trees might work magic. So I'm gonna put an ND8 on. I have some footage that I shot the other day of uh, putting this on and it's kind of tedious to put on. You're basically attaching the filter behind the camera as the camera's tilted down and then you place the filter over the lens like that. Now if you miss or you don't put it on all the way, there's a chance that you could see a little red ring from one of these polarized filters in your shot. So if you see that, you know that you haven't actually put it on all the way, you need to adjust it. Now I'm gonna turn on the drone, I'm gonna show you that yes, the drone powers on just fine with the filter on. Um, that was one of my concerns is, is the, is, the, is the gimbal going to be obstructed? Is the camera going to initiate properly or calibrate properly? Yes. If you have the filter running over the top of the camera. All right, we got our image, and uh, you can see I'm just hand holding this and I'm turning it back and forth, and you can see that there is indeed motion blur as we move the drone. Looks much more natural to my eye, at least. The polarized filter option turns. So as I turn the filter with my finger, 
sky actually becomes bluer and the grass becomes greener, which <laughs> is difficult this time of year, but the sky is less blue or more blue. That's not exposure. We're not changing exposure. We're just changing the way the polarized filter interacts with polarized light. All right, let's take off again. And let's check out the street. And we're gonna record. And yes, we have motion blur in the traffic. Now, we're kind of split screen right now. We have a very bright part of the image on the right and a very dark part of the image on the left. Um, again, this is a way that we can control with uh, EV and then auto exposure lock which side of the screen we want to expose for. And I'm gonna turn very quickly. There is our low shutter speed with motion blur. So that's what we're looking for. Something a little more natural. Um, now, are these filters necessary for every flight? No, but this does up your value if this is your only drone or if you're going on vacation, you wanna make it look the best it can and still be, <laughs> you know, pack light, then uh, getting the Mavic Mini with some Freewell, uh, you know, ND and polarizer filters will definitely help you out. Anyway, my finger's about to freeze off, so I'm gonna wrap this up, but thank you to Freewell Gear for sending me uh, these uh, ND filters and polarizers. They've always been great supporters of the channel. If you guys wanna see some more videos about the Mavic Mini or other drones, let me know what you wanna see. I'm really interested to hear and, and get some ideas from you guys. But thank you so much for watching this one, and until next time, happy flying.